Alrighty, folks, you know I'm feeling great on a Monday morning because we're now 6-0 in our last six Major League Baseball tier package picks on my premium site. We had the Yankees minus a buck 10 yesterday, and they smoked the Red Sox by the final of 8-2. Uh, Verdugo and Wells had multi-hit games. Uh, Carlos Radon, he allowed only two runs over five hits. And the good news is, folks, I've got another Major League Baseball tier package play going off here today for you. And just a friendly reminder, if you sign up for that package, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships during that time frame absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to my Major League Baseball free pick video here today for Monday, July 29th, 2024. Happy Monday to you. Hopefully you had a great weekend. And of course, my name is Brock Page. I've been dishing out free sports picks on YouTube since 2016. Now, uh, if you're on the fence about signing up for a membership, but you're definitely interested, you may want to think about signing up for my daily best play. It costs just six cents a day for 30 days worth of access. Uh, you actually get one premium selection of mine every single day during that time frame. And once again, guys, if you want to go bigger, please consider that Major League uh, Baseball membership package. We're once again 6-0 in our last six in that membership alone. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into some free content. We're going to start off with the Blue Jays at the Orioles. Uh, that is game one of a doubleheader, 3.05 Eastern start time. Uh, Baltimore's minus a buck 75 in game one, totals nine runs. Zach Eflin for the O's, Yariel Pudge Rodriguez for the Jays. And through 39 innings of uh, work this year, the righty Rodriguez has definitely given the uh, Jays opportunities to win. He's got 42 strikeouts and an ERA in the threes. Now the Jays also got the W in two out of his last three starts, and they average five runs a game during that time frame. They're facing a Baltimore club who's uh, had a bit of a tough time covering the run line at home. They actually have a losing record against the number at Camden Yards. So for game one, I think Toronto can keep this one close. I don't know if we're going to see a whole lot of scoring. Uh, give me Toronto plus one and a half run line and the under nine, and that is for game one. Now, game two, a little bit different. Once again, Jays O's game two is a uh, 635 Eastern first pitch. And in game two, Baltimore's minus 155, totals nine runs. Cade Mari Povich for Baltimore, Bowden Francis for Toronto. And contrary to game one, um, I actually like the Orioles to get the job done in game two. Uh, they're facing Bowden Francis, who's got an ERA of 582 for Toronto. And I'll tell you what, these Toronto pitchers, uh, they've hurt their team numerous times this year. Uh, they're actually, countless times, really. Uh, they're actually in the bottom five in runs allowed per game. But I'll tell you what, it's not all on the pitching. Uh, these guys have struggled at the plate, too. Uh, Toronto's a bottom five run-producing team in the American League. And out of their last 10 gatherings with the O's, Toronto's really struggled with Baltimore pitching. They were held to just 2.7 runs a game during that time frame. And they're facing a Baltimore squad who can definitely score with the best of them. The uh, O's are currently a top three run producing team in the league. Anthony Santander, he's the club leader in homers and RBI. Uh, Gunnar Henderson, he's got the most hits. And I uh, tell you what, when they face divisional opponents, Good things tend to happen. <laughs> Baltimore's currently 20-9 and nine against the AL East this year. Now, injury-wise, Mateo is still out for Baltimore. Kiermaier is questionable for the Jays. Nine out of Toronto's last 10 ball games did get over the, the, the number. Uh, meanwhile, Baltimore went 9-1 and one to the over in their last 10 themselves. Give me the Orioles, minus 155, over 9 in Game 2. All right, next matchup, little uh, divisional game here, Garden, uh, Guardians-Tigers, uh, 640 Eastern first pitch. Cleveland's minus a buck 20, total seven. Tanner Bybee for Cleveland, Jack Flaherty for Detroit. And uh, as good as Flaherty's been this year, I uh, definitely don't trust the uh, 
Tiger bats in this spot. Uh, they don't walk a whole lot, and they're averaging under 7.9 hits a game. And they got to face an 8-4 and four Tanner Bybee, who has 130 strikeouts and a 1.09 whip. And i uh, tell you what, these Cleveland pitchers have been tough to hit against. They're in the top five in the bigs in strikeouts per nine. But uh, i tell you what, it ain't just pitching for Cleveland. Uh, they're one of the better run-producing teams on the road in the American League. Stephen Kwan hits 342. Uh, Jose Ramirez, he is the second most RBI in the majors. Now, injury wise, Green and Meadows are still out for Detroit. When it comes to the total, the Guardians' last three road games all stayed under the total. Uh, they also went 8 and 2 to the under in their last 10 at any location. Give me Cleveland minus a buck 20, under 7. Next game should be a good one. Yankees, Philly, 6.40 p.m. East. Philadelphia is minus $1.35. Totals nine runs. Looks like Zach Wheeler for the Phils. Luis Heal for New York. And uh, both pitchers coming into today's game with double-digit wins on the year. Uh, Luis Heal's got 124 strikeouts and a 1.08 whip. Meanwhile, Philadelphia's Zach Wheeler, he has 133 strikeouts and an ERA in the twos. And, of course, uh, two of the best players in the game are squaring off in Aaron Judge and Bryce Harper. Now, total-wise, three out of the Phil's last four at Citizens Bank Park fell under the total. And they're also 60% to the under in their last 10. And if you want to see whether I'm making a play on the money line or the run line in this one, this game is being featured as today's Major League Baseball tier package pick on my premium page. But once again, we are 6-0 in our last six plays in that package alone. But as far as making a free play is concerned, give me the under nine. All right, next matchup, little NL Central game here. Cubs, Reds, 710 East. Chicago's a buck 20, totals nine. Uh, Jamison Tyon for Chicago. Carson Pickle Spears for Cincinnati. And uh, Spears has an ERA in the threes after 47 innings of work. Uh, only has two losses on the year. And uh, Spears has been getting plenty of run support when he starts. Uh, the Reds have averaged 7.8 runs a game in his last four starts. Ellie De La Cruz leads the clubhouse and hits. Uh, also leads the entire major leagues in stolen bases. And Spencer Steer, he's got an on-base percentage of 326. And they're facing a Cubbies team who struggles against divisional opponents. Out of 20 road games against the NL Central, Chicago got the W only seven times. And of course, at the plate, well, they really haven't been much better. The Cubs are averaging only 7.7 .7 hits a game. Now, injury-wise, Nitto and Bellinger are out. Uh, Paredes could suit up for his new club here today. Uh, meanwhile, for Cincy, uh, Luke Maley is still out for them. Now, total-wise, six out of Cincy's last 10 outings did stay under the total. Meanwhile, Chicago went 7-3 to the under in their last 10. Give me the Reds plus a dollar, under nine. Next game, Twins, Mets, 7-10 start. New York's 125, total eight and a half. Jose Quintana for New York. Simeon Woods Richardson for Minnesota. And I'll tell you what, Richardson's been really good for the Twins this year. Uh, you don't hear a lot about him because of his record. Um, it just it doesn't look like a big body of work, but it is. Uh, I believe he's got 88 innings of work under his belt, but his record is just three and one, so it doesn't it's not overly impressive. But uh, the dude's putting in work. He's got a 1.11 WHIP through 17 starts. Uh, only one recorded loss during that time frame, as I mentioned. And uh, the Twins have actually gone 12 and 5 straight up in all of Richardson's starts. So when this guy's on the bump, good things happen. Uh, now, of course, at the plate, the Twins are a top five run scoring team in the American League. Jose Miranda hits 324 with an OPS in the high 800s. And Willie Castro has an on base percentage of 353, uh, currently leads the roster in hits. And they're facing Jose Quintana, who has a losing record and an ERA in the fours. And, uh, you know, this Mets pitching staff has walked more batters a game than any other club in the league. 
And I tell you what, when they face American League opponents, bad things do tend to happen. They've got a losing record in their interleague games. Now, injury-wise, Harrison Bader is questionable for the Mets. Starling Marte is still out. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, Correa, Farmer, and Kirilov are still out for them. Now, six out of the Twins' last 10 ball games did get over the total. They're also 60% to the over against National League competition. Now, the Mets on the other side, they've gone 14-8 and eight to the over in their interleague games themselves. Give me the Twins plus 105, over 8.5. Next game, Mariners, Red Sox, 7-10 Eastern start. Boston's a buck 20 at home, totals eight and a half. Nick Pavetta for Boston, Logan Gilbert for Seattle. And, uh, you know, you really don't want to let Gilbert's record fool you. Like, I realize he's just six and six on the year, but I'll tell you, he gives these guys legit chances to win games. The right, he's got 132 strikeouts and a .86 whip. And no real surprise here, folks. Gilbert's gotten ERA in the twos. And I'll tell you, that's really been the strength of this Mariner franchise this year. They're pitching. Uh, these guys allow fewer hits a game than any other club in the bigs. Austin Voth has a .86 whip out of the bullpen. Uh, Thornton with a whip of 1.05. They're facing a Boston club who struggles making contact. Uh, they actually strike out more times a game at home than any other roster besides one. And of course, more recently, uh, more recently, the Sox took the loss in seven out of their last nine. And uh, they gave up a bunch of runs in those contests. Now, as far as uh, today's concern, well, starting pitcher Nick Pavetta, he's just four and seven with an ERA of 450. Now, injury-wise, Grissom still out for Boston. Crawford, Rodriguez, and Canzone inactive for the M's. Six out of Seattle's last home ball games did stay under the total. They also went eight and three to the under in their last 11 Logan Gilbert starts, giving the Mariners plus a dollar under eight and a half. Next game, Rangers, Cardinals, 745 East. Texas is a buck 25, totals eight and a half. Nathan Avaldi for the Rangers, Andre Polani for St. Louis. And I'll tell you what, polani has got a handful of wins on the season, ERA in the threes. And uh, I do like this price point for St. Louis, uh, catching a little plus money at home. They've actually held the Rangers to just 3.6 runs a game in their last 10 meetings. And as far as the Rangers are concerned, well, uh, they're coming off, uh, they're coming fresh off a three-game sweep to the Blue Jays. Actually scored just 11 runs in that series. And when facing the National League, the Rangers have definitely had their hands full. Uh, out of 18 contests against the National League on the road, the Rangers got the W only five times. And as good as Avaldi's been, well, these Ranger pitchers have allowed a considerable amount of runs while traveling. They're actually in the bottom three and runs allowed per game away from home. Now, total-wise, the Rangers are 63% to the under against National League opponents. Meanwhile, St. Louis saw six out of their last 10 stay under the total themselves. Give me St. Louis plus 105, under eight and a half. All right, next game, Braves, Brewers, 8-10 Eastern first pitch. Milwaukee's a buck 20, totals eight. Colin Ray for Milwaukee, Grant Holmes for Atlanta. And the 28-year-old uh, Holmes will make his first start of the season. Uh, he's had 10 games in the bigs this year uh, in relief duty. Um, he also had 18 appearances at AAA Gwinnett this year. So it uh, looks like they're testing Walters uh, a little bit with this guy. But uh, I tell you what, the Braves have played their worst away from Truist Park this season. They've got a losing record on the road this year. And, uh, well, they just haven't hit well in those games. The Braves have been held to just 7.7 .7 hits per nine when they bat first. And they're facing a 9-3 and three Colin Ray, who's gotten ERA in the threes. Of course, at the dish, the Brewers have scored all kinds of runs at American Family Field. These guys are in the top five in runs per game at home. William Contreras leads the organization in hits. Willie Adamas has the most RBI. Now, injury-wise, Yelich and Dunn are still out for the Brewers. Ozzy Albee is inactive for Atlanta. Five out of the Rays' last seven starts. Um, 
for the Brewers fell under the total. Uh, give me Milwaukee minus a dollar twenty under eight. All right, next contest: Royals White Sox eight ten Eastern start. KC's a buck seventy totals nine. Alec Marsh for the Royals. Chris Flexen for Chicago. Now the uh, righty Flexen's two and ten with an ERA in the fives. He's also backed by the lowest run producing lineup in the game. They're going to face a seven win Alec Marsh, who's got ninety strikeouts and a respectable WHIP. And these Royals pitchers, they've thrown quite well on the road. Actually, in the top five in the league and fewest runs allowed while traveling. Uh, Zerpa, he's got an ERA of three flat out of the bullpen. MacArthur with 17 saves. And out of the Royals' last time meetings with Chicago, they allowed only 12 total runs during that stretch. Uh, now, total wise, six out of the Royals' last 10 ball games did stay under the total. Meanwhile, Chicago went 60% to the under in their last 10 themselves. Give me KC minus a buck 70, under nine. Next matchup, Pirates Astros, 810 Eastern start time. Pittsburgh is the dollar 40 favorite on the road here. Total seven and a half. Paul Ponzi Skeens for the Bucks. Jake Bloss for Houston. And I think this powerful Houston lineup can uh challenge Skeens here today. You know, the Astros lead the major leagues in hits per game. Jordan Alvarez, he's the club leader in home runs. OPS of 915. And Jose Altuve has got the most hits. They're facing a Pirates club who's been terrible at the plate when Paul Skeens pitches. Out of his last five starts, the Bucs scored just one run or less in all of those contests throwing out that Mets game. And, you know, that's really been a, a problem for Pittsburgh this year. They're bats. They're striking out 9.8 times a game on the road. Now, total-wise, three out of Pittsburgh's last four road games did get over the total. Give me Houston plus one and a half over seven and a hook. And with that, folks, we're going to dive into our next and final breakdown for the video. It's going to be in that Nationals Diamondbacks game. That'll be a 940 Eastern first pitch. Arizona's minus a buck 60, totals nine. Jordan Montgomery for the D-backs. Mitchell Parker for Washington. Now, uh, Parker's five and six with an ERA in the fours. And these Nationals pitchers have... Definitely giving up their uh, fair share of base runners. They're uh, actually in the bottom three in the league in hits allowed per game. And unfortunately for them, it's the D-backs who are now a top three run scoring team. Cattell Marte leads the roster in hits. Christian Walker's in the top 10 in homers and RBI. And uh, as bad as Montgomery's been on the mound, well, it really hasn't mattered. D-backs are averaging over 6.2 runs a game in his uh, starts this year. Now, three out of Arizona's last four at Chase Field got over the total. Meanwhile, Washington is 60% to the over in their last 10 at any location. Give me Arizona minus 160 over nine. And with that, folks, now it is time for our quick pick recap. I like the Blue Jays plus one and a half under nine in game one. Give me the Orioles minus 155 over nine in game two. Cleveland minus a buck 20 under seven. I like the under nine in the Yankees Phillies game. Can't give you a freebie on that one. Give me the Reds plus a dollar under nine runs. Minnesota plus 105 over eight and a half. Mariners plus a dollar under eight and a hook. Cardinals plus 105 under eight and a half. Brewers minus a buck 20 under eight. Royals minus 170 under nine. Houston plus one and a half over seven and a hook. And give me the Diamondbacks minus 160 over nine runs. And with that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium site. Now, if you do end up getting a membership here today on patreon.com slash Brock page, just a friendly reminder, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. But most importantly, folks, got to thank you for joining me right here on the free video. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, folks, happy Monday to you. Best of luck to you. 
And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium site at patreon.com slash Brock Page.